Do you know what pneumonia is and how to avoid it? It's an important question that deserves our attention. Pneumonia isn't just a common cold or a simple cough. It's a serious lung condition that can have severe consequences if not treated timely. But don't worry, we're here to delve into this topic and give you the lowdown on this illness. We'll be exploring what pneumonia is, its causes, and the signs that may indicate you or someone you know has it. But we won't stop there. We'll also be discussing the steps you can take to prevent it. Trust us, prevention is easier than you might think, and it's something we should all be aware of. So whether you're simply curious or you're actively seeking to improve your health knowledge, you've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn more about this potentially dangerous but preventable condition. You might have heard the term pneumonia, but do you really know what it is? Pneumonia, in its simplest terms, is an infection that creates inflammation in the air sacs of one or both lungs. These air sacs, or alveoli as they're medically known, are little balloon-like structures at the end of your breathing tubes. They're where the magic happens, where oxygen gets passed into your blood and carbon dioxide gets removed. Now when these tiny, yet vital alveoli become inflamed due to pneumonia, they begin to fill with fluid or pus. This can make it difficult for oxygen to reach your blood. Imagine trying to inflate a balloon that's been filled with water. It's not going to expand properly, right? That's kind of what it's like for your lungs when pneumonia strikes. The fluid or pus filling these air sacs can be the result of a bacterial, viral, or fungal infection. Bacterial pneumonia is the most common form, often following a respiratory infection, like the flu or a cold. Viral pneumonia, often caused by influenza viruses, can be just as serious but is sometimes less severe than bacterial pneumonia. Fungal pneumonia is less common and usually affects individuals with weakened immune systems or chronic health problems. This inflammation and fluid buildup can cause a range of symptoms, from coughing and chest pain to fever and difficulty breathing. It's a serious condition and can be particularly harmful for people with weakened immune systems, such as the very young, the elderly, or those with chronic illnesses. The severity of pneumonia can range from mild to life-threatening. It can start with symptoms similar to the common cold and then worsen over days or weeks. The severity depends on a variety of factors, including the type of germ causing the pneumonia, your age, and overall health. Pneumonia is not something to be taken lightly. It's a leading cause of hospitalization and death worldwide. But remember, knowledge is power. Understanding what pneumonia is is the first step in preventing and treating it effectively. Now that we understand what pneumonia is, let us explore its causes. Pneumonia can be caused by a variety of organisms, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi. These microscopic invaders hitch a ride on the air we breathe, and if our immune system doesn't manage to fend them off, they can settle in the warm, moist environment of our lungs and multiply. Let's talk about these organisms in more detail. Bacteria are the most common culprits behind pneumonia. The chief offender among them is the bacterium Streptococcus pneumoniae, also known as pneumococcus. This bacterium usually lives harmlessly in our throats, but it can turn against us when our immune system is weakened, say by another illness or by a lack of sleep. Next up, viruses. The same viruses that give us colds and the flu can also cause pneumonia. This is especially true for people with weakened immune systems, the very young and the elderly. Viral pneumonia tends to be milder than bacterial pneumonia, but beware, it can pave the way for a secondary and more severe bacterial infection. Finally, let's touch on fungi. Fungal pneumonia is less common, but can be a serious problem for people with chronic health conditions or weakened immune systems. The fungi that cause pneumonia are often found in soil or bird droppings and are breathed into the lungs. These organisms cause pneumonia by inflaming the air sacs, or alveoli, in your lungs. This inflammation can lead to fluid or pus filling up the alveoli, making it difficult to breathe. It's also important to know that pneumonia can be community acquired, meaning it's contracted in everyday environments like school or work, or it can be hospital acquired. The latter is often more serious as the bacteria in hospitals can be more resistant to antibiotics. Understanding the causes of pneumonia is essential, but knowing the symptoms is equally important. Identifying pneumonia early can be the key to effective treatment. In this part of our conversation, we're going to delve into the common symptoms of pneumonia. First off, coughing. This isn't just any regular cough, but a persistent one that sticks around, often producing mucus or phlegm that may be green, yellow, or even tinged with blood. This happens because pneumonia often leads to an accumulation of fluid and pus in the lungs, which your body tries to expel by coughing. Next, let's talk about fever. 
Many people with pneumonia experience a high temperature, sometimes accompanied by chills or sweating. This is your body's way of fighting off the infection. Remember, while a fever is a good sign that your body is trying to fight off the infection, a high fever can also be a sign of a severe infection that needs immediate medical attention. Difficulty breathing is another hallmark symptom of pneumonia. You might find yourself feeling short of breath even when you're resting. This happens because pneumonia affects the lung's ability to take in oxygen and expel carbon dioxide. This can make you feel as if you're not getting enough air. Chest pain is also a common symptom of pneumonia. This pain often feels sharp and occurs when you take a deep breath or cough. The pain results from inflammation and swelling in the lungs and the lining of the chest cavity. Now, keep in mind that the severity of these symptoms can vary widely. Some people might experience mild symptoms akin to a cold, while others may have severe symptoms that require hospitalization. Also, it's worth noting that the elderly, infants, and people with weakened immune systems might exhibit different symptoms altogether. They may become confused or delirious, experience a lower than normal body temperature, or have a lower than normal response to the infection. In essence, if you or someone else is experiencing these symptoms, it's important to seek medical attention promptly. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial to preventing complications. Now that we've learned about the symptoms, let's discuss how to avoid pneumonia. Preventing pneumonia involves simple steps that everyone can follow. It's all about being proactive about your health and making conscious choices every day. Let's delve into some of these measures. Vaccination is one of the most effective ways to prevent pneumonia. There are vaccines available for both children and adults that can protect against the most common types of bacteria and viruses causing pneumonia. These include the pneumococcal vaccine, the flu vaccine, and the Haemophilus influenzae type B Hib vaccine. So, make sure you and your loved ones are up to date with your shots. Good hygiene is another key preventive measure. It's as simple as washing your hands regularly with soap and water. This helps to remove germs that you may have picked up from contaminated surfaces. And if soap and water aren't available, using a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol can also do the trick. Covering your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing is also crucial. This can prevent the spread of germs that can cause pneumonia. When you cough or sneeze, do so into a tissue or the crook of your elbow, not your hands. This way, you avoid spreading germs when you touch objects or people. Leading a healthy lifestyle is also important. This includes eating a balanced diet, exercising regularly, and getting enough sleep. These habits can boost your immune system and help your body to fight off infections. Avoiding smoking is also a must. Smoking damages your lungs and makes you more susceptible to respiratory infections, including pneumonia. If you're a smoker, consider seeking help to quit. Lastly, limit your exposure to people who are sick. If someone in your household has pneumonia, take extra precautions to avoid getting sick. This could include wearing a mask and washing your hands often. Remember, these are simple steps that all of us can follow, regardless of our age or health status. Prevention is always better than cure, especially when it comes to pneumonia. We've covered a lot about pneumonia today. We've journeyed together, unraveling what pneumonia is, an infection causing inflammation in the air sacs of our lungs. We've explored its various causes, from bacteria, viruses, to fungi, and understood the symptoms, which can range from cough, fever, to difficulty in breathing. But most importantly, we've learned how to prevent it. Simple steps like maintaining good hygiene, getting vaccinated, and taking care of our overall health can go a long way in protecting us from this illness. The significance of understanding pneumonia cannot be overstated. It's not just about being aware of a disease, but about knowing how to safeguard ourselves and our loved ones from it. So, Let's continue to arm ourselves with knowledge because knowledge indeed is power. Let's keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep spreading awareness. Remember, knowledge is power. Stay informed, stay healthy, and keep those lungs clear.